some of you guys pay so much money for ssc lens but listen let me tell you the reason why i do like the nfd rather than the fd ssc so here is my reasoning if you are looking for affordable manual cinema lenses with great optical design amazing image quality and great color rendition then let me introduce you to an amazing set of canon nfd i'm going to share with you guys my experience using these lenses and what i like about them hopefully this video can help you to make up your mind about your vintage or your next vintage lenses also if you're in the market for picking up your lenses or putting together your own set this video is for you also i'm going to share with you guys the reason why i do like the canon nfd rather than the more expensive and popular ssc version but first of all if you are new here hello and welcome i appreciate you stopping by before we take a dive into their technical details let's take a brief look at the history of the canon fd lenses the FD lens system was introduced by Canon in 1971 and was a staple in their lineup until 1980 or the late 1980s. We are going to focus on the Canon NFD introduced by Canon in 1971, which are a bit lighter than the uh, Canon FD SSC and they also have a bayonet mount and they do not have the locking mechanism like the Canon um, FD SSC or SC and the chrome nose. And just so you know, there are a few different type of Canon FD lenses. You do have the FD with chrome nose, you have the FD with the marking SC on them, and you also have the um, FD with SSC on them, and the L series and the spherical series lens. For your reference, the SC stand for spectral coating and SSC stand for super spectral coating, which is the coating technique used by Canon in the 70s. It was significant advancement in lens technology during a time where the coating is applied to the outer element of the lens to increase contrast, reduce ghosting and minimizing saturation, reflection and lens flare. The first thing that come to mind when I think about the Canon FD is their fantastic build quality. These lenses are built like tanks. They're sturdy, reliable, and can withstand the test of time. And honestly, the FD SSC, they are very, very strong, and they have more expensive material than the one that I prefer, which is the new FD. But obviously, I still prefer the NFD because they are a bit smaller and they are a bit lighter. And for me, they look very visual pleasing than the bigger um, FD SSC. Obviously, the most important thing about any lenses is, of course, their image quality. And I can assure you that the image quality you get with the Canon FD, it's very hard to replicate with any modern lenses. Because these lenses were made for 35mm film, they have this almost imperfection that you see with digital sensor and it gives them their unique characteristics. The Canon FD lenses deliver beautiful image rendition. The sharpness isn't too much or over the top. The color rendition is visually pleasing. The image they produce have a certain warmth and charm to them. And basically that's what gives them their DNA look. I'm sure you guys are aware of the Canon K35 and I've seen most set of K35 which are completed by some of these lenses because they do have some similar visual characteristic and they go on to do amazing things on set. So if you're thinking about putting on your own um, FD lens set, I would highly recommend for you to do that because they are cheap 
they have great image quality and as you use them on different um, sensor you get this image quality that is very uh, impressive in my opinion and one thing that I do love about these lenses is that they change best on the sensor that you use it on and basically my friend used them on a Sony Venice because that camera have such a high quality sensor it push them to the limit and they give you this amazing characteristics and obviously when we use them on the Sony FX6 they give you a different characteristic based on what the sensor can do and that is very good about these lenses so for you to truly see what they can um, get you you need to be able to pair them with a decent sensor that push them to their limits Another thing that I do like about these lenses and is one of the reasons why I would recommend anyone to get their hands on them is their adaptability. As you can see, you can take these lenses and put them to any camera that you have and give them a new life. As you can see on mine, they are currently on um, Sony E-mount and that is Basically, the reason is because my friend tend to rent them from me a lot and he's got the Sony Venice and the Sony FX series and A7 series and he tend to use them and that's why right now I'm like, you know what, before I actually adapt them, I need to just leave them to... Um, E-mount so he can use them but I'm still making up my mind on whether I should just have them uh, cine modify them to EF and I'll think about that later but another thing that I need to tell you is that basically when you buy the adapter make sure that there's not a big play from your lens when you attach it to your camera and also another thing that I found that I really need you to consider everyone that use Canon FD they use them because of their visual characteristics and there's some adapter that I have seen that have like a glass inside and this is something that I have noticed. I like the design of this lens, it is quite old and it was designed by people that knew exactly what they was doing and the coating was applied to it based on what they wanted the lens to achieve visually. Or the characteristic that they want the lens to have and the people that design this cheap mount sometimes they just work on a mirror that obviously um, help you to get that close focus and when actually carefully testing them together it kind of like take away from the lens optically so be careful with the um the lens mount that you are going to use on your camera and i would actually uh, advise you to invest in the proper and the best lens mount so you can have all what your lens can offer. Some of you guys pay so much money for SSC lens but listen let me tell you the reason why I do like the NFD rather than the FD SSC. So here is my reasoning. When Canon introduced the Canon FD lineup they came up with their coating which is SC which was spectral coating and the best way to show people that their lenses has those uh, spectral coating was to put a white marking on their lens and tell people hey this is the lens with our new coating technique and people was very excited and they purchased all of those lenses because what they had the coating in them and then later when Canon discover SSC which is super spectral coating they had to change the marking to red and show people hey the SC coating that you liked now we've made it better and people are like cool keep buying the SSC it was later in 78 when Canon had to think what can we do now let's redesign the SSC lenses make them lighter and then build them to what we now knew as the Canon NFD or the new FD and what a lot of you guys don't know these lenses have the same coating by the way that is actually one of the reasons why I did buy the 50mm SSC 
and then NFT because I did try this lens as much as I could and they actually have the same um, coating. So I understand you might like to buy the SSC for the hype or for your understanding that they are better than the NFT. But for me, I can um, shoot everything with the NFT and I will instruct the colorist to push it the best way that he can. So that is my reasoning. I need to say this very quick so you understand where my love for vintage lenses come from. I went to uni with a lecture that was very old. Like I can imagine he was like 80 or 70 and he used to love vintage lenses because he was a DP on one of the film called Peter and the Wolf and he basically started telling me about how these lenses will one day come back and be popular and what did I do and I remember each time I got my student finance I started buying all these lenses so I do have the Canon FDs I have the uh, Nikko AISs I also have some um, Helios 85 millimeter f1.5 and and a lot of tahir or mirror lenses and i also have the legendary zeiss super speed there so if you want to see more vintage lens as you can see we also move into a new home as well so i have this whole room dedicated for youtube and i'm going to talk more about my vintage lens collection and their characteristics so if you want to see that video make sure you subscribe and now let's go back to talking about the canon fd or nft so now i'm going to share with you guys my whole set so you can see all the lenses that i have and the reason why i picked them so mostly when i shoot music videos and cars establishing location or landscape the uh, 20 millimeter f 2.8 is a lens that i really try to use as much as i can and mostly when there's something like lines i try to avoid it because depending on the sensor that i use there's like a bit of optical um distortion going on but it's not really noticeable and because i've mostly used these lenses or the 20 mil on um a super 35 sensor i don't really get to see the full width or the full field of view of the lens and now that i'm stepping into a uh, full frame aka black magic announce a new camera i'm going to enjoy using this lens on a full frame but hey this is um 20 millimeter f 2.8 and the next lens that i use i actually skip the 24 millimeter because like i say I do have the 20 that I use mostly establishing things and this is the 28 millimeter but this lens is special because it's f2 rather than being f um, 2.8 and honestly this is my favorite lens and most of the time when I shoot and let's say there's a character inside the car there's a character two character in the short i don't really like to use a super wide angle lens because like i say optical distortion this is the lens that i tend to go for and most of the time is actually either the 28 on camera a and the 35 on camera b or either the 28 and um 50 or 35 and 50 because my focal lengths that i use the most is 28 35 and 50 so these tend to be the lens that i use most of the time and i really like everything that it does produce the next lens is obviously the 35 now this lens live on my camera when we're using two cameras one camera always have a 35 for me it's a very pleasing field of view and is my favorite field of view and honestly i use it most of the time when there's one character in the scene when there's uh, maybe i'm doing a, like a medium close-up i tend to use that because it still gives you room so you can actually see where the character are and give you also a sense of place rather than using the 28 that's to be um it's a bit wider also another thing to mention this is f2 to f22 and the 35 as well is f2 
two eight two f um twenty two. Another thing that I do have obviously is the fifty f one point four. Listen, the whole thing about f one point four. I don't really think I use f one point four that much because I don't really like the whole depth of field too too much. But mostly I go between two eight and f four with all these lenses f. 28 and f4 you get the sharpest of the most and that's where actually i feel like they perform, especially f4 that's where they perform the best obviously this is the um fdssc 50 that i did purchase to just see how well they compare to the nfd and i might resell it or i might give one lens away to you guys that is coming later and this is the 85 millimeter f 1.8 this is my favorite portrait lens because the bokeh on this camera it is really really crazy also this is 1.8 it go up to f um 22 and i use this rarely because i was just doing a commercial and that's not my commercial my friend's commercial and they use this to get all the beauty shots and and it was really really good and the last lens that i have it is the 100 millimeter f 2.8 and this go to f 2.8 to f 32 and this lens i've not really used it that much but hey as i said because i do have i used to use them on a super 35 camera the 100 mil on there it didn't make sense to use that much but now that i'm about to get a full frame a camera 100 mil is going to be 100 mil so that's that is my vintage canon fd set and if you're looking to build yours obviously i'll start with the 50 28 and 35 and then you see how you are going to be using them and another thing that i really like the 28 is that you can actually shoot and then do a digital zoom or even um 35 and do a digital zoom for you to achieve a more closer field of view if you will also as you can see I've not really done much about them when it come to cine modifying the lenses because as I've mentioned my friend used them more on his uh, Sony camera that's why he kept convincing me to leave them like this but later I might actually EF or convert them into EF so I can use them on the red camera or basically use them on any other camera that um i might have and another thing is that they do have a front a ring on them this is um 52 to 77 so i can adapt any um circular filter to them and that's basically what we usually do and also so we use them on a production again my friend billy used them on a production and they have um this 77 to 95 so they can fit on their math box and actually that is what they use so we do have these rings that come with the lenses for ease of use and like i say i'm still making up my mind about um cine modifying them and also maybe having some follow focus gear that is something that i am thinking about so as you can see this is my canon um nfd lens set and they are very good lens they are affordable they they last they build like a tank they give you good image rendition and their saturation is very pleasing they are very soft and the only thing that you cannot change about lens is their visual characteristic and that is what makes this lens different and that is what gives them their visual dna so again if you're new here i appreciate you checking out this video and if you like it please make sure you subscribe and turn on your notification bell icon so you're not going to miss when i um post a video like this